In this video, I'm going to talk about a couple different ways that you can do more than one thing to a given data set. So for example, what if we wanted to um, remove the missing values from mass and only look at the bovidae and then calculate the mean of, of those things all in one sequence as opposed to just throwing them away like we've been doing here. So there's a variety of ways we can do this. Perhaps the safest way for you to do this is to use uh, temporary objects. So in this case, what we're going to do is say um, filter. Oh, let's let's call this MLH2 again. And alt minus. Then we're going to do filter MLH. And we're going to um, want to have the ones that don't have missing mass. So not is dot na mass dot g. And we only want the bovidae. So we're going to do family equals equals bovidae. Okay. So notice that's filtered us down to a hundred records. And now I can um, calculate the mean of that particular object. But I think that's um, what I want to be able to do is to add the mean to my data frame so that I can normalize the, um, the mass, for example. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call this MLH3 and I'm going to mutate MLH2 and I'm going to say mean mass is equal to um, mean, <laughs> boy that took way too long, uh, mass g. And if I want to normalize it, I'm going to want to also have the standard deviation. Oops. So I do the standard deviation of mass g. And Actually, I could do all three steps at once with mutate. I could come in here and I could say um, mean mass, standard deviation of mass, and I want the z-score of mass, which is mass dot g minus mean mass divided by D mass. And this isn't quite going to work because it's going to do the division first. So we have to put these two in parentheses. So it, now it'll do the subtraction and then it will do the divide, division by the standard deviation. And finally, let's say I just want to have a look at the uh, three now. And then I just want genus, species, and z-score mass. And there I have it. So I've got my species and my z-score mass. So in this strategy, what you do is you do one function, you assign the result to um, a name, and then you use that name in the next step. And you just work your way step by step through whatever calculation it is that you want to do. The difficulty here is, let's say I want to insert a new step in here somewhere. Um, so I have to be careful to make sure you change the names consistently wherever you need to. So for example, if I wanted to um, arrange the data between these two steps, then I would do um, MLH3 arrange MLH2 um, and let's let's arrange by uh, mean no sorry by mass okay and then I change this to MLH4 
H4, and I change this to MLH4, and I'm surprised, although you might not be, <laughs> to decide to discover that I didn't get my um, my observations are not arranged in ascending order as I expected them to be. And the reason is I forgot to change this object to do that. And so now, now they'll be arranged from smallest to largest with the appropriate um, set of values there. So that's one strategy. Um, the other strategy is to use an object called a pipe or an operator, sorry, called a pipe. Operator is like the assignment operator or the, this is a, a, a logical operator minus is an arithmetic operator. The pipe is an operator that allows us to chain functions together in sequence. So if we were going to do um, a chain here, we could do it this way without any temporary objects. I could say MLH, and then I get the pipe by doing Control Shift M or Command Shift M on a Mac. And then, and that gives us this percent greater than percent operator. And what this is going to do is it says, I'm going to take what's on the left hand side and then call what's on the right hand side as a function with the left hand side inserted in the first spot. So if I do filter, um, before I said MLH, but now I don't have to do that because the pipe is going to take the data frame here and stick it in there for me. So I just start off with not is.na mass.g, not is.na newborn g. And that's just going to run that and give me that on that. Um, give me the same thing that I ended up with in MLH2. And I could save that to an object. Let's call it MLH5 um, and go from there. I like to put my steps in my pipes, chains of pipes on new lines. That way there's only one sort of operation on a line and it makes it really easy to read and see what's going on. So I could just keep going. So now I want to um, mutate, and I'm just going to copy this code. The result, I need to delete this part because I don't need to provide that. So the result of filtering is going to be passed to mutate, and then I do these operations on mutate, and then I can do um, arrange, um, and again, the result of mutate is going to be passed in first, so I don't need to do anything. I can just say I want to have uh, Z mass in descending order, and then finally pipe that to select. And I just say genus species Z mass. And there we have it. So now the object MLH5 has got our Z transformed mass. Oh, something happened that wasn't quite right here because I've got some whales in here. Oh, I see. I didn't add family boba day. Oops. And in fact, I didn't want to do that one. I just wanted to do that one. MLH5, there we go. Now we've just got the um, bovids and they're going from a high of 4.77, their normalized mass, down to minus 0.66. Um, so it's quite a skewed distribution um, of body masses. Oryx are about the average body mass. Okay, so 
either of these strategies works. Um, I'm very fond of pipes, um, so I will tend to use them in, in what I'm doing examples. I use them because they are, uh, I find them, uh, I find it makes few, for fewer errors when I don't have to keep track of a bunch of intermediate objects. Um, it's entirely up to you. You might prefer to use the intermediate objects. So in the assignments, I don't care which of these two strategies you use for doing multiple operations, either one at a time with intermediate objects or using the pipe and um, chaining multiple function steps together. Um, those are uh, all possibilities of, of ways to, uh, to do things.